morning, I want to share the word of God. It's an honor and a privilege. I'm not the best. It is a privilege that I can stand here and share the oracles of God. This year, our theme is mounting up. And this morning, I want to talk about one of the wings that make us to mount up. And this is the wing of integrity. Integrity. It is a character, quality of someone who has sound moral judgment. I say again, moral judgment. It is measured by your willingness to do the right thing. Friends, nobody is born with integrity. We grow it. It is a matter of choice to be a man or a woman of integrity. You do the right thing, even if it costs. Yes, it is costly. Integrity is very costly. So I say again, it is a matter of choice. You don't compromise truth. This is the first thing that we do. You compromise the truth. But my prayer to you this morning and myself is that we don't compromise the truth. The truth that you know. The Bible says in the book of John 8.32 that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth that you know, not the one that I know, the one that you know shall set you free. We did, we did honesty with others and it can only be achieved by listening to the Holy Spirit. For you to be a woman and a man of integrity, you must learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. It is only the Holy Spirit, our helper, who can make you and me a woman and a man of integrity. Integrity is something that you prove you have during difficult situations. If you can look at our lives since last year, up to this time, our integrity is wanting. We have compromised so many things. The Lord is asking this morning, where can I step? I don't have a foothold. Where can I step so that I can come and bring you back to my fold? Because we have compromised the truth. We have compromised our integrity. And the Lord is asking this morning, if today I come, where shall I step? It is being able to make the right decision, even though it may cost you something. I don't know in the company that you're working today, how you made it to that, to that company, the promotion that you're enjoying today. How did you acquire that promotion? The Lord is saying this morning, he is looking for men and women of integrity. In your business place, are you known as a man and woman of integrity? In your plot where you live, can somebody pick on you that this man can be our, a, 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 a spokesperson in our plot because he is a man or a woman of integrity? In the business that I read somewhere in the book of, I think it's in Deuteronomy, about the business people and the scale. When you are buying, you are buying one kilo from, from, from the seller. But you know in you, umevuta you are baka inapima three kilos to benefit you. That scale, the way in scale. And the Lord is asking this morning, we are born again. Do you have a mark that you are born again? Do you have a mark of integrity? Can you be picked upon that you are a woman or man of integrity? Friends, integrity is lacking in the body of Christ. There's no demarcation. We are all the same. In the business world, in the, in the marketplaces, we are all the same. Nobody can pick on you or pick on me that this woman stands by her word. This man stands by her word. Because you are a man or a woman of integrity. If you know in your heart that you made the right decision, you don't have to worry about getting caught or exposed. You know for real, I'm in this office because I got it in the right way. I'm enjoying this promotion and my business is exp expanding and excelling because I know I'm doing the right thing. The Lord is looking for men and women of integrity. We can all make a, we can all make a difference if we can be men and women of integrity. Working with integrity is one of the best ways to prove that you become, you have become more mature in your work with God. Integrity is more precious than riches and more important than our comfort. We are all looking for comfort, but the Lord is looking for integrity. What pleases us is the name, that I have a name. But the Lord is saying, do you have integrity? Yes, you have what it takes, but do you have integrity? 
In the book of Proverbs 28, and number six, verse number 6, the Bible says, Better is a poor who walks in his integrity than one perverse in his ways, though he be rich. That word that you have, that money that's loaded in your account, how did you get it? The Lord is saying this morning, better is the poor who walks in his integrity than one perverse in his ways, though he be rich. If the church is an armory, the point of, the, the point of it is the integrity of the individual, individual Christian, the church. And you know, an armory is where we put war weapons. There are all kinds of weapons in that armory. But one that is missing in the armory of the Christians store, it is, in, it is integrity. And the Lord is asking this morning, for how long will that gap be empty? Because there's no integrity. The armory in the house of God. The Psalms make much of this. And we are going to look at the life of David in the book of Psalms, verse, chapter 26. Verse 1 to 6. That's why we base our scripture this morning. The Psalms make much of this. And Psalms 26, as an example, unveils David's devotion to God. We are looking at one to one, six marks of integrity that appear in this chapter. We are going to look at faith. Number one is faith. And one has to reprove commitment to scripture, moral independence, open identification and spiritual dependence. Those are six marks of integrity. Mark number one, a person of integrity demonstrates faith. A person of integrity demonstrates faith. David knew that integrity is impossible apart from the work of God. He the one who has it. Unless the Lord has work in you, he's working you because you are working in progress, you cannot make it alone. You cannot be a woman or man of integrity alone. The Lord must have an upper hand in your life. He must have an upper hand in your working because you are work in progress. And David says in, said in Psalms 26 verse 1, judge me O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Can you have that guy this morning to say the Lord, to ask the Lord to judge you? Knowing the kind of life that you are living. You know the kind of life that you are living. Can you tell the Lord, judge me? David told the Lord. And you know that David was a man after God's own heart. But he told the Lord, judge me. For I have walked in my integrity. And this is my prayer this morning for you and for me. That you may ask the Lord. Because we are man. We are men. We are carnal. We are full of flesh. We slide and come back. May we ask the Lord this morning to judge us. David said, I have trusted also in the Lord. Besides trusting myself, I also trusted in the Lord. So that he can bring me back on track. Integrity requires a moment by moment trust in the Lord. Moment by moment trust. Not once. It is moment by moment trust in the Lord. The person who stops trusting even an instant as David eventually did after he wrote this psalm, is a person who is on his way to sliding. Friends, the moment you leave trusting the Lord, you begin the journey of backsliding, or sliding back to sin. And David said, judge me. Number two, a person of integrity is open to reproof. Who speaks to your life? And that's why you can do anything and everything because there's nobody who brings you back to track. But David said, a person of integrity is open to reprove. you open to correction. And the Bible says that open rebuke is better than hidden love. David knew that he had nothing to fear from a divine inspection. We normally take our vehicles for inspection. Can you allow the Lord to take you for inspection? That anything that is not trustworthy may fall. He invited such scrutiny by praying, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. Friends, the greatest sin begins in our mind, then down to our heart. And David said, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart. That is Psalms 26 and verse number 2. 
He was saying, if there's something wrong, which the way I'm looking at life, I want to be aware of it. Because to you, it might be okay. But before the Lord, it is not okay. So David asked the Lord, examine me and prove me. The statement is recognition that our assessment of our integrity can be faulty. You can say, me, I'm not a sinner. But before the Lord, we are all sinners and short, fall short of the glory of God. We can be out of line when we think we are right. It is when we know we are wrong and choose not to notice that we are most at risk. When you think you are right, you are most at risk. We aren't born with a heart of integrity. And if we want it, we have to fight for it. Nobody is born with a heart of integrity. We all look for it. And believe you me, when you look for it, you find it. Because it is in the work, an intimacy work with the God. Number three, a person of integrity is committed to scriptures. A person of integrity is committed to scriptures. David wrote, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. Psalms 26, verse number 3. You are loving, loving kindness. The person of integrity reminds himself constantly of all that God has done for him. If you can take a stock of your life, since last year up to now, three quarter is complaining. But I want to assure you one thing, that you, for you being alive, that alone surpasses any other thing that you are alive to witness of the goodness of the Lord. He commits himself to walking the truth of God as found in his word. You can never go wrong with the word of God. Make the word of God your companion. Make the word of God your friend. Make your word of God your food and your water. And friends, you can never go wrong with the word of God. He does not sacrifice integrity even in the name of compassion. Integrity stays in place whether adversity or prosperity comes. Friends, may you be a man and a woman of integrity. No matter what comes your way, it will come and go. But you remain the same. Because you've made up a choice to be a man and a woman of integrity. And I want to say this, friends. That whatever is born on the altar is sustained by the altar. I don't know how you got into that marriage. Today, three quarters of your life, you've been on your tears because of that marriage. And you know, if you can open up your heart, you know how you got into that marriage. Grab your big mutu chengo, a friend, na ukajiona kwa your marriage. You introduce by your friend to his or her fiancé, and then you went back there alone, and lo and behold, you became their wife. And today, you are reaping. You are reaping what you planted. Three quarters of your marriage, you've been on tears. You know how you got that job. The advances of your boss made you to get the promotion. And I was, as, as I said, anything born out of the altar will be sustained by the altar. Whatever is born of the flesh will be sustained by the flesh. At the corner, Sema, there's another promotion. Give me what you gave me in the first place. Lo and behold, you have to give. We see you driving big cars. And you know the secret. It is behind you. You know how you got that business. In the morning, the Lord reminded me something. And it did touch me. That you go to the petrol station. Those who are drivers here, you go to the petrol station. And tell the driver, you tell the, the petrol attendant, I have a tattoo. I have a tattoo. That's the kind of life that you are. And you are born again. You got that job because of the recommendation of your pastor that you are born again. Are you working in integrity? Yes, they, they received this 500. And you know for real, Igari kona mafuta ya miyatatu, ya mbiti kwa mfuko. Number four. A person of integrity exhibits moral independence. A person of integrity exhibits moral independence. David wrote in Psalms 26, verse 4 and 5. I have not sat 
with adulterous mortals, nor will I go with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. David made a choice, which also we can make this morning, to walk in integrity. Doesn't matter what the company is saying, the group of people that you are, you are in, doesn't matter what they are doing, what they are saying, stand alone and be counted that you are a man and a woman of integrity. By this, he didn't mean he looked down on them from a prideful position, no. What I'm saying and what David is saying is that rather he simply recognized that if he went along with the crowd, he would suddenly lose his uprightness. Like you want to be there. I have seen people who have been sat, but you, inside you, you are still working, but outside you are not working. So you leave the house early in the morning, take a bath, go to sauna, you come back in the evening because you live in denial. And David knew that unless he part with these people, he cannot stand up a man, as a man of integrity. And he wants to preserve his name as a man after God's own heart. Friends, there's nowhere companies are taking us. There are no, nowhere groups are taking us. It is the Lord who is taking us to heaven. May you be alone. And let me tell you, God will not regret taking you alone to heaven and taking the rest to hell. Because he can never compromise. The Bible says in the book of John that he came to his own. They received him not. But them that received him, he gave them power and authority to become children of God. God can never compromise. Stand alone. In this company, there's only one person who we can testify that he loves the Lord. In this plot, we have one person who we know is a man or one of integrity. These most small things, friends, will make us lead to hell. Therefore, he, should, he showed a health independence from society's shifting morals. Shifting. Because they are here today, tomorrow they are there. Shifting morals. But David made a firm decision. Indeed, we should seek moral independence. But if we fail, we give in into pressures rather than remaining independence. Can you remain independent? Can you remain not giving in to pressures? Because they will come. Year after year, they will come. But can you remain as a person of independence? It is true that scripture holds no examples of great achievements after moral failure. There's no achievement. After moral failure, there's no achievement. Yet, that truth does not diminish the reality of forgiveness. When believers confess their sins, God forgives totally, as in 1 John 1, 9. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive, forgive us, our, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is a daily thing. We normally t t take the new believers, students through this and tell them, if, if, you, if, you, if you confess your sins. But I'm talking to you this morning. You are not new believers. You are old believers. But every day, you must confess your sins. Because we live in a sinful world. Having a heart of integrity helps us recognize mistakes and reach out for God's grace and forgiveness. Remember this, we are born sinners. It is only Muslims that are born, born again. But for us, we are born sinners. Therefore, it is a process every day, every day, for you to draw closer to the close. And then you are forgiven. And you reach out for the grace of God. Nonetheless, in the book of Proverbs 6, 32 and 33, the Bible says, whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He commits adultery with who? Eh? It is on the screen. Whoever commits adultery with a, with a woman lacks. And you think you have, done, you, you have got it. At the many women you have slept then, with them, you become a winner or become a hero. The Bible says you lack understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. Not the body, but you destroy your own soul. 33. Wounds and dishonor he will get. And there's nothing but friends like the wound of the heart. Better the wound of the, of the body because a doctor can treat it. But the wounds of the heart, only God can treat them. And his 
reproach will not be wiped away. Remember this. When David sinned with Uriah's wife and they got a baby, the baby did what? The baby died. Those consequences will forever follow us. Vanessa Sefiri. The truth of this, of this, of course, is seen in the fact that in spite of all David's accomplishments, he's still known to this day as a king who yielded to sexual temptation. Yes, he's a man after God's own heart. But deep inside you say, Lakini adilara na bibi ya uria na akamuwa. That cannot be rubbed. Bana iso sifiwe. Every choice has a consequence. And it's automatic. Ukide ukianguka uguje ki hii meno. Meno moja itoke. Alafu uokoke. Itamea. No, yes, it can be. You take sugar, you make coconut, but you make coconut with your own hands. That is life. So whatever you do, consequences are automatic. Are we together? His sins were wiped away before God, but if the effects of those sins, in the view of the public, continued, yes, the Lord wiped them. But in the view of the public, he's still a sinner. He killed. When people are going to war, he decided to remain behind. When people are fasting, now we started fasting, first of July. Where bado unakula? Bado unakula, na unaweza cheka David. David watu wadienda vita, akabaki kwa compound. Na hapo ndipo, that was where David fell. Because akena kuota jua. And so a naked woman. Are we together? For those who don't read the Bible, akaona mtu mama akioga. Wacha ni. I might assume that you are together and you, you only read the Bible on sand. Let me bring you on board. David saw a woman who was naked. And you know the last of the eyes. He akaangalia, akajifanya angalia. Akaangalia tena. And you know you don't take one minute to shower. Una wakati wa kujimwagilia maji. Are we together? Unajipaka sabuni. Are we together? And David was still gazing. Even you, you can laugh at David. People began praying passing first of July. Today we are in the fourth day. Napodo una memenya chakula. Mbado una kula bebe. Kwa sabu unasema, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Which flesh? This flesh. This flesh is not going to heaven. It is the spirit that is going to heaven. Are we together? Where are you? When people have gone to all, where are you? David left, was, was left in the camp doing what? Akipo muzika tu. Where are you this morning? We are in the fourth day of prayer and fasting. Lakini we are going to the spirit is, it will continue to be willing. Mm -hmm. The spirit will continue to be willing, but the flesh is, it will continue to be weak. It is a process. The list of qualifications for church leaders found in 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a, position of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. That is the word I was looking for. To be, you ought to be blameless, to be a, a woman or a man of integrity. Be blameless. The husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach. Verse 3, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Verse 6. Not an obvious, not being puffed up with pride, he fell into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach as the snare of the devil. That is the result. Titus chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. Titus 1, 
verse 5 to 9. For this, for this reason, I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. For if a man is blameless, you see, another blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of dispersion or insubordination. For if a bishop must be blameless, another blameless, as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but hospitable. But disqualifies the other statements. A lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and convict those who contradict. Are we together? Those who contradict. Having one term at the end of the list is blameless. Not sinless. There's a difference between being sinless and being blameless. But above reproach. God forgives, but people remember. Yes, God will forgive that you stole. God for, would forgive that you corrupted. But people will forever remember. The lingering public memory of failure is what the Bible calls reproach. Broken moral integrity means the spiritual leader forfeits the right to lead and invites divine discipline. Scripture insists that leaders are judged on a different scale. Yes, I'm a leader. You are a member. Our, our scales are different. I'll be judged differently from you because me, I have an influence. Are we together? There are people following me. Therefore, my judgment will be tougher than yours as a member. In the book of James 3, verse 1, the Bible says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Hey. How many desires to be teachers? You will notice that in this warning, James numbered himself among those who teach, but he urged caution upon those who would want to join him. Moral independence requires that the person who discredits his ministry remove himself from his position of spiritual authority. He should not need an ecclesiastical body to call him to account. While consequences are or should be more severe for Christian leaders and fail morally, they also exist for the ordinary believer and for the truth he or she represents the truth that you represent. That is what you'll be judged with. That is what you'll be judged with. Whether we like it or not, most people's opinion of the gospel of Christ is tied to the opinion, to the opinion of those who profess to believe it. What do you believe this morning? Number five. A person of integrity will openly intest in identify with the spiritual realities. I come again. A person of integrity will openly identify with the spiritual realities. This is the reality because it is, the, it is spiritual. Do you have spiritual realities that you can say, no, according to me, this one is a spiritual reality. Christian pilgrims should make both their allegiance and responsibility matters of public record. Our world is filled with people who are timid about their faith and reluctant to acknowledge their failures. You failed here? No. It is a weakness. That is what is not trading. Did you steal? No, I took. I don't know what committee is doing because they are not thieves. You took. You didn't say you took. Did you cheat? No, I used wisdom. That is the world that we are living in. David, however, said in Psalms 26, verse 6 to 8, I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving 
and tell of all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. David made a covenant, which also even us this morning we can make, that we will love the habitation of the house of God, and more so where his glory dwells. Friends, this is a tent of meeting, as was with the children of Israel. And this is where the glory of the Lord dwells. This is where we encourage one another. This is where we build one another. This is where we rebuke one another. Can we make this habitation? Can we make the habitation of the Lord to be your love? That every day you look forward. But as we look forward for Sunday, it is an everyday affair. Monday we are here for prayers. Tuesday we are in our homes. Wednesday we are here for Bible study. Thursday and Friday we are in our homes. Saturday men are meeting and ladies we meet in the fourth Saturday. Can you make it your love? What excites you in life more than the word of God? More than the habitation of the house of God where his glory dwells. The person of integrity has gone on record. He knows that public worship requires accountability. Where is it going? Who speaks to your life? When do you mean the alpha mean the omega? You cannot be that. There must be somebody who speaks to your life. Accountability person who can bring you back on track, who can bring you back on check. That the road that you are taking is not good. If David has somebody to bring him on track, he could not have messed with what he did. But nobody was accountable for David's life. He was a king. And you are a leader. You are a member. At the same time, integrity demands that pilgrims take responsibility of their actions. We are the pilgrims. We must take an action of our a, a responsibility of our actions. You sinned. You know, I love the Catholics. Catholics they work on a secret confession day. When end up, na father make a box. I have come. I did this. I did this. And then the father said, forgiven. father. Do you go before your father? Not the father or the the father, the heavenly father, to confess. You must take responsibility of your actions. Are we together? At the same time, integrity demands that oh, they take that's what it for the action. When we have blundered, we own, we must own it. You know what you did. Jana ulikuwa wapi? Ulisema nini? Ulikuwa kwa kwa jam. Mtu akaja kukata mbele hivi. Ukamuita jina gani? Usiseme, we are in the church today. Ulimuita jina gani? James 5.16 says, Confess your sins to one another. And pray when we confess. The thing I said to do what? To make it public. Confess your sins to one another that you may and another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The world is not looking for perfect people. But it look, longs to see people with the courage to face their faults. I come again. The world is not looking for perfect people. But it longs to see people with the courage to face their faults. Pilgrims ought to openly acknowledge even an innocent mistake. Doing so is so unusual that it attracts a lot of attention. Fighting for integrity will grow our capacity to face and change the obstacles that continually force us to compromise God's truth. Finally, number six. A person of integrity will display spiritual dependence. A person of integrity will display spiritual dependence. David was independent of the opinions of his peers, but dependent on the word of God. Did you hear that? That David was independent of the opinion of his peers, but dependent on the word of God. He pleaded in Psalm 26, verses 11 and 12. For as for me, 
I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My foot stands in an even place. In the congregations, I will bless the Lord. He made a decision. The person of integrity is not perfect. He recognizes that he needs God's mercy. As long as he's dependent on the Lord, his foot stands in an even place. As long as you're dependent upon the Lord, your foot will stand in an even place. The moment he took his eye off the Lord, he begins walking along the edge of a steep rock. Moses was a man whose heartbeat was close to God. Nevertheless, he, told, he was told that he could not enter the promised land because of his failures to obey. How many times did he fail? Only once. Because of he hit the rock. That's all it takes, especially for a leader of the people of God. What does integrity hold in your decisions, in your business, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your thought life, in your workplace, in your estate, or in your plot? Where does integrity hold in all of this? Because I know all of us, in one of, way or the other, you belong to these categories. Are you willing to do the right thing? That, if, that even if God and your conscience are the only witnesses, my conscience and God, they are only the witness. Are you ready to do the right thing or to maintain your integrity? Lies, little lies, aren't so true. Integrity is not something that you either have or don't have. It is a lifestyle that we must intentionally strive for. The best choices are made from a deep well of character. It's about doing what is right simply because it is the right thing to do, even if it costs us. Integrity like that honors God. Friends, a reputation for integrity takes years to build. It takes one loose, foolish moment to destroy it. I don't know where you are this morning concerning integrity. And when every eye is closed, and heads bow. I want to take a stock of your life, in your workplace, in your spiritual life, in your salvation, where you live, in your marketplace, do you have integrity? Can you be picked upon that this is a man or a woman of integrity? Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we bow before you because you know that your integrity, God, and you deserve integrity from us so that we can qualify to be your children. I want to thank you because forgiveness is gr and grace is free. And this morning you are telling us to come and you're going to mold us. Give us a new heart that we can please you to your Father. You can stand out for you among this world that is full of things that don't please you. It is my humble cry this morning, Abba Father. Lord, help us to seek you when you'll be found. To make us men and women of integrity. That you'll be proud to say, these are my children. Father God, we want to honor you. Because you know, we are not born with integrity. We must work for it. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray.